Hi there. Now, in this last part, we're told that immediately after the collision, a constant force of magnitude r newtons is applied to Q in the direction directly opposite to the direction of motion of Q. As a result, Q is brought to rest in 1.5 seconds. And what we've got to do is find the value of r. So if you'd like to have a go at this, just give you a moment to pause the video. OK, welcome back then if you had a go. So first of all, what I'd want to do is just draw a quick sketch then of this motion. So we've got the surface here and we've got our particle Q. OK. And we know it's got a mass of 0 0.6 kilograms. So what are the forces going to be on this particle? Well, we've got its weight, okay, acting downwards. That's going to be 0 0.6 G Newtons. We've got a normal contact force. I'm just going to call that X Newtons. I'd normally call it R Newtons, but since we've got to find R, it seems... Uh, obviously not uh, sensible to do that. Now, if this particle is moving, say, from left to right, remember it is moving here at 5 meters per second, okay, after the collision. So we'll just put that in as 5 meters per second, and then is brought to rest OK, we'll just put 0 meters per second there. It's brought to rest after 1.5 seconds. So there's this resistive force R acting on it, and that's got to be opposing motion in that direction there. So mark that in as R newtons. And as a consequence, it's going to be deaccelerating. I'll mark an acceleration arrow in here as A, but we will expect A to be negative because it's decelerating. OK, so first of all then, in order to get R, I'm going to use Newton's second law. That is essentially force equals mass times acceleration. But I don't know the acceleration. So I'm going to have to turn to a equation, one of the constant acceleration equations, SUVAT-based ones, OK? So let's just put down our variables, S, U, V, A, and T. OK, we need a positive sense, and I'm going to take the positive sense in the direction of motion. So we'll put that there. And what is S going to be? Well, we don't know S, the displacement from here to here. U, the initial velocity, well, that's going to be 5. V, the final velocity, well, that's zero. The acceleration we're trying to find, and the time we're given is 1.5 seconds. So we just need to connect these variables here. And I would use V equals U plus AT. And so if we rearrange this for A, subtracting U from both sides, we've got V minus U equals AT, and then divide both sides by T, we end up with A equals V minus U, all divided by T. And if we substitute our values in, we've got V, which is 0, minus U, which was 5, all divided by the time T, which is 1.5 and we get a negative value. It turns out to be minus 10 thirds. OK, and those units will be meters per second per second. So now that I've got the acceleration, I can then resolve in the direction of motion. In other words, I'm applying Newton's second law in that direction. Then what I've got is the force is going to be minus r, OK? It acts in the opposite sense to my positive sense here. We don't need to include these two forces because they're perpendicular to the direction of motion. And so this would equal the mass times the acceleration. Well, the mass is 0 0.6, and the acceleration we've just seen is minus 10 thirds. 
and this gives us that minus r equals minus 2. So therefore r must be equal to 2 newtons. Okay, 